Hello, my name is Anand Bean and welcome to 70 Second Airhex TV. Today with uh, viewer questions, but uh, probably more discussion. So let's start with the content. And um, so Airhex news. First, some podcast. Um, so um, right before the last Airhex TV, I published the DMDN first approach with web components. And this is one of the most su uh, successful or popular podcasts so far which is uh, surprising. So I didn't thought that, that web components are that interesting. On that note, tomorrow I am uh, I will give a um, free session at Google in Munich about web components. And there are 110 registrations with uh, 20 uh, wait, uh, on 20 participants on the wait list. So I will cover this a little bit later. So it's, it seems like web components are doing well. And uh, what I also recorded is uh, a an, an podcast with Tanya Obradovic. And Tanya is um, Tanya is the, the uh, I would say, the, how to call it, the um, community manager, I think, from uh, Eclipse. Um, and uh, But she is also an extremely good programmer, so I didn't knew that. And so we had a chat about that. And uh, of, of course, we ended with Jakarta E, uh, but we started with uh, Smalltalk, actually. And uh, then a lot of the jars with Alex Soto. Uh, he's a Quarkus Developer Experience Manager. And the recent one was with uh, Thomas Wüttinger, and this is the uh, developer behind GraalVM. So, uh, so this was an interesting conversation. Absolutely Jakarta E on MicroProfile Free was just uh, compilers and, and GraalVM. Okay, so now um, the uh, the topics. What we also had um, the other ear hacks news is the of course where is the uh, workshop? Um, my workshops um, are well booked. I think this is almost uh, almost both are almost full. And uh, the second one, what I also will do, I already mentioned it already. Uh, it would be uh, web components without too much, you know theory we just will build an app with redux and make it as complex as possible and see whether we can hit the limit uh without using any framework so this is what will happen on uh on the second day and the first day it is um micro profile and some more stuff so i will add i uh, would also like to show stuff which is not in micro profile we should have enough time there's one day so this was the airhex news and uh, non 200 Jaxores responses JSON body. So I got a nice question, uh, a long one, a long question, but well explained, and uh, from Vasim Tech. And he asked, um, and he had the following problem. So there is a uh, Jaxores response, and or Jaxores resource with a response, and he has here response status created. And uh, the problem is, uh, in this particular case, if, there, if this is 412, um, Payara, in this case, will generate an HTML response. And um, so I tried to replicate that, and I will also blog about that because there's uh, some code involved. So I created a reproducer, and to show you this, I will first reinstall Payara. And uh, so now it's started, and then I would like to start the Payara. And then uh, let's go. I would like to show you the code. And what I did, this is just stock JaxOS project. So the micro profile is not needed here, but it's my stock template. And um, if we go to ping resource, um, what I tried to do is I implemented a ping resource. This is also my standard. Just ignore the message. It doesn't matter. We could actually delete that. And um, so what I did, I created a JSON object, also JSONP object. And then uh, created status for for twelve, and the entity result and return that. So and this seems to work. So um, let's see. So uh, let's go with. Did I started what? No, we need a what to deploy the application. So almost like Quarkus, right? So with what? So we are here, and then curl localhost eighty eighty. Then we need the context, and then we need uh, resources and slash pink. And it works, and it works also with I. As you can see, precondition failed, and I still get the body. Why that? Because I set the body. 
So if I will remove the entity here, then it will generate the HTML page, which was mentioned. So now I get precondition failed with the HTML page, and I think this is the problem. So you don't, if you don't uh, set a body, the uh, Payara will return a default HTML body with the additional information, which seems to be your problem, I think. So this is how it behaves. Now we can kill all Java. And now it's that again. Okay, so we also don't need this anymore. And now, so no questions here, hopefully. No, oh no, hopefully. <laughs> and by the way, what I wanted to ask you, should we still keep, you know, the IRC chat? So it was very busy at the beginning, but right now no one likes IRC. I also have a Slack account. We could set up a Slack channel for Airhack. So if you like, we can go with Slack, but I don't, I probably would just use it once once a month because uh, Slack is an absolute uh, time killer and uh, hacking Java is more fun than slacking ASCII codes. <laughs> okay, now, um, now where's my browser? So, yeah, this was the first question. And the second one is uh, Kovica asked me, you have done a lot of videos on Quarkus. Why do you prefer it over Helidon? Micronode, maybe some other product, products. And um, I don't prefer Quarkus over Helidon. In fact, um, Helidon, I actually open Helidon, it is um, a really a great project and um, it is also different. So it comes with a micro profile and it comes with the SE version. And um, you have even, it is more like a library. Quarkus is more like a runtime or framework. And, um, and it's great, so it's not like I, I don't prefer it. And, and th this is what I would like to explain right now. It's just, um, I'm not a journalist or journalist or a, a, a researcher. What you usually see is what I'm doing in my projects. And um, fact is, most of my clients, they have Payara, Tommy, Whitefly running. And usually they have, uh, uh, in Europe, so most are running a Red Hat operating system and they have some some uh, contract with uh, with um, Red Hat regarding JBoss or Whitefly support or Payara support. And um, there is almost no web logic. So uh, I think my last project with web logic was around 2008, 2010. And since then, I, I, as I, my, I personally never saw the, the project in production again, um, oh, in my projects, right? So, um, and Helidon comes from Oracle. So if if someone will ask me, no, we have a web logic and we like to migrate migrate to something new, I will I will of course go with Helidon, and then they will ask me, no, how it behaves, what's the runtime behavior, and it's like, okay, can I? Then I would probably record some screencasts because it is easier to explain for me, and then send a link to my clients, and you will see the uh, the, the the screencast. So this is what I what I usually try to do. You know, if it's something not that confidential, I just uh, write a post or, or or record a screencast. So this is, um, and uh, because I use Quarkus in my commercial projects a lot, I also use it in my leisure for my project, you know, to save time. And um, and um, I just try, I actually, from time to time, I use Helidon because um, it is uh, another a big, uh, big runtime. And I don't use Micronote at all, I use the, uh, actually, if you go to Micronode, it is a fresh design, great ideas. The problem with, with uh, Micronode, my problem is, it is not based on the APIs I usually use. So um, I use for 20 years uh, Java E, and uh, now Microprofile is for me is just extension from, from, from Jakarta E or Java E. This is for me exactly the same programming API with additional APIs. So, and Micronode will be completely different. And of course, I could use Micronode in Malaysia, but I cannot just go to my client and say, you know, now we migrate from Whitefly to Micronode and everything is different. So, uh, it is like, it is not like how it works, right? So, and maybe some other products, but uh, I actually, if, if, if my clients would ask me, no, we have, we would like to, um, we have already Oracle uh, support, uh, Java SE or, what, or whatever. And uh, which framework should we prefer, you know, uh, Helidon or Quarkus? In this particular case, I will go rather for Helidon because I think in one point of time, I will have to double check that Oracle will provide commercial support for Helidon. So that, that's the idea. And um, by the way, what I also did, 
I um, this is an old post, old uh, October last year. I assembled a list of all uh, microprofile uh, runtimes I'm aware of, and the Cumulus AE. There were were even committers uh, from Cumulus AE at the um, uh, Airhex workshops in December, and we had a nice chat. They building uh, nice things for, uh, I think it was Slovenian government or government related stuff. And uh, or not it was all industry or something like this. And uh, th th there were Cumulus people, and Cumulus is also really interesting stuff. It's not like a dislike Cumulus, but I cannot just record, you know, uh, a screencast for every for every uh, uh, runtime here. Um, Hammock, I think, is lesser used. Thorntail is end of end of life. Fujitsu Launcher uh, is big in I think Japan, but uh, less in Europe. Microwave. It's a nice Apache project, but uh, uh, right now I cannot just you know use it in my project in my commercial projects. Open Liberty I use it a lot in commercial projects actually. Payara probably the most used um, uh, runtime for micro profile, and I always use the Payara full. A Whitefly right now I would say Payara and and Whitefly 50/50, and Tommy a little bit less than the others, but uh, we migrated some Tomcat projects with Tommy. Okay. So now this was probably the longest, fluffy, fluffiest answer ever. And by the way, this is the list I searched before. So they are uh, the uh, upcoming events. And tomorrow there's absolutely free from Java developer to web guru in one hour, no slide session, where I will just explain with uh, Java words, modern, modern web. And this is the uh, event with waiting list. Let's see how bad is it. So... Oh, 120, 13 on waiting list to today morning were 21. And um, but an an week later we have kick kick as web components with a bit of quarkus. So what I will do here is this is like the introduction, and this was the second part because here I will focus on everything, hello world, and then just you know, assume you already know what a JavaScript class is. And um, but the strange thing is. This is like two events here. The one has 25 attendees, and the other one has, wait a second, uh, we're like 60 or something. Sixty-five. So it seems like there are two events in parallel on the same location, and I will probably cover both. So we will have already 90 attendees. So um, why I'm telling you this, if you cannot attend tomorrow, come a, w a week later. And uh, if you have questions regarding, you know, basic JavaScript, I will answer whatever you, an you ask me. So, and there will be no martial arts in involved. Not do you think you will fight for, you know, with Angular guys, no. There will be absolute peaceful, peaceful event. So, now we cover this. I would also like to close the Helidon and Quarkus. This is what I uh, do a lot right now, and this is why uh, if there is no, if something happens, uh, then um, or something, if I find something interesting, so I will block and record a screencast about that. Why not? I like to save time. So um, on that note, what I did today, um, I actually um, recorded two screencasts: Quarkus versus Whitefly, and um, and uh, from from performance perspective. And Quarkus versus micro, uh, micro profile, Quarkus uh, Quarkus versus Whitefly from uh, memory uh, perspective, and um, and uh, what I did here, I pushed the sample application to the repository, and what I will do this week, publish the results on my blog. So the, I actually mentioned them; you will see in the screencast. But um, I also would like to 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 uh, publish the results. And um, I also recorded the Graal VM version. And uh, someone asked me at Quitten or someone, this is Sebastian, uh, actually the next one of the next uh, uh, guests on the up up upcoming uh, Ahex FM episodes. And Bastian um, uh, asked me what's the difference between stateless and request scoped. So uh, uh, stateless EJBs were a little bit faster than request scoped, but uh, Quarkus was still faster. So this is the short answer. Um, and I will publish it here on, on my blog. So this is like, you know, you hear it here first, is the very fresh repository, 17 uh, uh, hours young. Okay, so we cover that. So I think 
Quarkus and Helidon. Now, blog comment. So we covered the questions almost. So you were very lazy with the questions this uh, this week, and uh, so I I just covered additional questions or one additional question from my blog, and um, I recall this is an old blog post. Old means seven years, and uh, what I did, which Java fr web framework to choose, the client versus server hunting story. I hope. Uh, oh, <laughs> I see here ZKOS. ZKOS is it still a thing? Wait a second. It was a big thing, and I was constantly asked, you know, by uh, the in projects why I'm not using ZQOS. Yeah, still a thing. Okay, and um, this framework was like uh, this was I think based on Mozilla Zool, and it. Um, and it uh, was translated the Zool to JavaScript. So back then, and um, yeah, and um, the the um, Elixir type, I think, is committer of one of the projects. Have a look at Spinka's job, Yup and Pippo, and funny name. So I just took a look on, on these frameworks, and the the, the uh, there is a Spinka's. I think this is the one of the developers uh, pinged me. And what I like is the the first uh, first paragraph. We we live in a crazy world where the new best thing is always changing. JavaScript, that suck language, <laughs> is everywhere. <laughs> so this is actually perfect. So it, um, uh, perfect, uh, a nice introduction to our framework, right? And everybody thinks uh, they are Netflix, which uh, which is absolutely true. So this is like really interesting. Um, and they they then you need uh, reactive non-blocking serverless function on GraphQL web web scale microservices. <laughs> Kubernetes. <laughs> this is really great. And um, what I have to say is uh, the code is really interesting because this is like uh, you have a main method. You say what you would like to do and, uh, and and you will go with it. And this is based on Google Juice. So I never used that in production, but uh, they, they ping me on my blog and say, so, okay, <laughs> I just took a look on this. And um, uh, at least, you know, it is... Uh, Sympathetic for, for me, so it's li really nice and <laughs> nice introduction. So and the other one is very similar. It's called Pippo. So uh, also interesting one, and they f are following similar approach, which reminds me a little bit on um, had it done the SE version or um, the um, Micronode a little bit. So th so in Java is still a lot going on, and we just cannot co uh, know uh, the 104 kilobyte core. We we cannot cover everything here, right? And and the problem is, lots of my clients have already uh, CDI based uh, Jakarta E, uh, Java E, and J two E applications. So um, we try to f to migrate to if they have to 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 something you know uh, new as 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 fast as possible. So that that's uh, that's the challenge, or uh, just you know uh, just um, uh, modernize the code base and 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 just use the old runtime. Why not? Okay, cool. By the way, um, I, I also um, this was actually uh, where so I I was at a BMW event and um, it was open public event at BMW about Quarkus and before me this was the first event it was uh, micro profile productivity with. Quarkus, and this was at um, BMW Munich, and uh, there were also a lot of attendees. And before me, there was Sebastian Blanc, and um, and he uh, showed you know the uh, uh, really nicely you know how Quarkus is working. And I got the idea because I get constantly questions, you know, uh, isn't Java not too big, and uh, is uh, Java uh, Jakarta you know too slow, and memory consumption, whatever. And uh, now we have Quarkus. It's okay. Um, and what I did is, uh, he, he was before me, and I just uh, started um, Quarkus, and I said, okay, how to compare it to something, you know? And uh, so then I got, got the idea, uh, I downloaded Tomcat, plain Tomcat, empty Tomcat, and created Hello World Quarkus with Jaxor as CDI, and Tomcat on Quarkus, uh, with the application, is smaller than empty Tomcat. So this was amazing. So, okay, how far can I go? And I just compared it with Jetty, and 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 Quarkus was still smaller. So I think I hope with Quarkus, 
all the memory related conversations will stop and uh, we will, can focus you know refocus again on on uh, on the actual problems or business logic at least okay so this was uh, what I forgot to mention cool so spincast if you like take a look on that oh so this has to be good you know actually cool trick so we covered that and I hope Kovika you are happy or happier Dempile Dempile ask me is there a way to integrate LiveRay with Java applications in order to do the single sign-on so LiveRay is uh, to my knowledge a CMS portal which runs on OSGI like infrastructure and uh Sure, you could integrate that with Java E, but Java E applications don't have SSO. So I think w what you will need is something like uh, Keycloak, which uh, creates the um, which creates the tokens, JSON Web tokens, and then uh, Java E applications will understand the token immediately. And uh, LifeRay, I hope I hope as well. So I, I didn't try that. So uh, if you share the token, you have a kind of SSO. And uh, let's say, I remember there was also Life Ray War. Exactly. So you could uh, d d download um, bundled with <laughs> bundled <laughs> bundled with Tomcat. This is actually cool. We bundle the application with the server. So uh, it should be Tomcat bundled with, um, yeah. Uh, so it seems like war, and if there is a war, it understands uh, servlet filters, so it should understand micro profile. So, what I will do in your case, I will take a look on small ray. I O, I think everything is I O these days, exactly. So, uh, small ray I O, and if you go to the projects in small ray, you will find the JSON web token, and this is like a polyfill. And the question is whether you could make life ray. Live Ray on Tomcat behave as a JSON Web Token MP application, and then you have your SSO. So, and of course, what you can do, you can just add uh, the key cloak, uh, the key cloak servlet filter to Live Ray. Live Ray, this has to work. And the best possible solution, I actually tested it with Quarkus, is using uh, um, how it's called uh, key cloak. Uh, gatekeeper and this is a go library which uh, you can configure with um, yaml and json so i uh, i just uh, <laughs> took the opportunity and 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 used json for that and it worked uh, really well and what gatekeeper is is like a proxy in the middle it uh, negotiated a token with keycloak and attach the token to the header and pass the header to the to the service. So this was what uh, what happened. Okay. So um, and this is like a Go library. You download just the binary and run it. So it's really nice. I hope the question is answered. So. The next question, knowing that uh, OKD is always, this is, um, OKD is the uh, OpenShift, uh, the uh, OpenShift, how, how it's called, OpenShift Kubernetes, origin Kubernetes distribution. This is, I think, uh, origin Kubernetes dist distribution. I always thinking is like the developers and uh, then, it, uh, but OKD is origin, OKD, IO? Yes, I O. So uh, origin community distribution for of Kubernetes. So this is uh, OKD, and this is um, where you can um, get a mini shift and run it uh, with OC cluster up. And um, he asked me, scaffold and jib with a Kubernetes cluster can make a good alternative to OpenShift S two I. I think Dempile, what you would like to do is you would like to use OpenShift 3, but then you have S2I. If you have OpenShift 4, I'm not sure. You, you still have S2I because you can run S2I wh wherever you like. It's just, it, it will work on every on any Docker container. But 
let's say it's impossible to run S2i, source to image. And uh, so the question is, what are you are running? If you're running Quarkus, you don't need S2i at all because uh, uh, the, the, the Quarkus doesn't require any configuration. You package the configuration with the application. There's nothing outside. Exactly. So, um, and uh, if you have Payara or Whitefly, then you can use S2i, but you don't have to use uh, S2i. What you can do e equally well, you can have uh, a Jenkins, external Jenkins, which builds the uh, the uh, Whitefly or uh, or like configured Whitefly or configured Payara with project specific settings outside of your Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster, and then then push the ready to use image to the Docker registry on Kubernetes or OpenShift, and then your project will just inherit from that. This is what I did, you know, the last five years probably. If you watch my screencast, it's exactly what happened. I usually had my super image and I just inherited from the image. And this would be the same approach here. So I don't even need scaffold or chip. I think what you only need is you need a super image uh, of Whitefly, which is empty. And then you need project specific configuration and you can inject the configuration and how to do that. So in Whitefly project, we use the, uh, how it's called, uh, JBoss CLI, I think, uh, to configure the server. And on uh, on Payara and uh, Payara micro projects, but my project, I usually Payara full, uh, we are using the uh, S2i image with, uh, with um, how it's called, pre, uh, pre deploy scripts. Um, the admin scripts, so the, um, this is like text files which uh, contain the uh, AS admin uh, commands where you can configure the, the entire server. So this is what I will do. So yeah, service. Uh, they are migrating from Jakarta 8 to Quarkus. And I see here greetings from Graz. And Graz is a beautiful city. Um, I spent some time there in projects and they have uh, a really nice, I think it's castle and uh, with uh, lots of tunnels. So it's an interesting city, nice city. And um, and um, this is the project. They uh, was a really nice kind, like a startup, which used Jakarta E, and the project was really reasonable. So, and they would like to migrate from Jakarta 8 to Quarkus for unknown reasons. And uh, now they have the problem, uh, and, be, and this problem is not Quarkus specific, what I think, what, what happens here is you used Payara before and Payara uses Eclipse Link. And uh, with Eclipse Link, uh, it was more less problematic with the lazy loading properties. So what you will have to do is, uh, I will try that, you will have to commit the transaction or detach the entities before they leave the JAXRS facade. So this is what, what, what has to be done. Um, otherwise, uh, if they leave the uh, facade, the transaction commits, and uh, the lazy uh, the the lazy entities are not cannot be loaded anymore because the tra transaction commits. So this is this is the, this is actually a problem. So you have to invoke or resolve all lazy dependencies before the transaction commits. This is the right answer. And uh, if you leave the uh, the the Jaxor as resource with uh, lazy uh, lazy dependencies, um, the transaction's already committed, and then you get the, 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 the error here. Okay, um, how to do that? Um, the the, the, the uh, nicest solution would be use so-called named graphs, named entity graphs, where you can load the entities, uh, uh, whatever you need, um, uh, declaratively. What you can, of course, also do is invoke the getter, uh, which is uh, with the lazy setting, uh, in order to preload the entity before it gets uh, before it gets uh, transferred. And what you can also do is you can you could, of course, try you know to serialize the entities before they leave the facet as well. But this is more like a hack. Uh, I hope it's the problem is clear. And uh, we had the problem before, before Quarkus. It's just uh, Hibernate is more explicit with the lazy and, and, and Eclipse Link for unknown reasons doesn't have the problem. So it can still fetch the uh, the data from, from, from cache or from the database. 
And the next thing is, what is the best practice to develop two or more Quarkus applications at the same time? Um, so there are two instances. At, um, so usually at the same time, I mean, you would develop one at the same time and not the other. And if you need two, then probably the one you are depending on would be uh, would, would run on, on one port and your uh, the other on another port, and they could communicate with each other. Um, in Docker would also work, but it's not necessary with Quarkus, I would say. So you can you can have as many instances you like as long as the port is unique, and you can set the port in the application properties or at startup minus d Quarkus HTTP port, I think. So you can specify this at a startup time, and um, so usually the scenario would be more like you have a couple of microservices which are already stable or almost stable and you're working on one. Then I will put whatever is needed to a Docker container and launch everything at once. And yeah, then, then you are working on, on, this, uh, on this jar locally and it communicates with the port uh, localhost something with, with the others. This is what I would do. And, um, and uh, I actually try to avoid Docker if it's not necessary. So you can just you know launch with Quarkus would uh, as, as many instances as you like. Yeah. And if you have two years um, you used to do use Docker, you could use um, uh, Docker Compose. Then you can start all the instances at once and um, and uh, or, or test containers, if you like. So you could automate everything in the unit test. Um, yeah. Okay. And by the way, if they have to communicate, you could, yes, the, uh, you could use the Quarkus REST client. This is a micro-profile client. And uh, the interesting part is you can specify the host and port number. A uh, port number, you can, you can, you can save it in uh, application.properties from Quarkus. So it gets uh, resolved at start time, start time. And you can override this with the uh, minus D property or environment entries. So I think we are done. So we mentioned that we mentioned people, spin casts, and so forth. We uh, so the zk framework was also mentioned, and the even refreshed the page, which is remarkable. So uh, it is uh, still developed, and um, and I think we are done. So then I would say so there are no questions on Twitter. My IRC is very lazy. I would say thank you um, for uh, coming back, watching the show, and see you at uh, next Airhex TV, uh, Airhex FM podcast, so not see rather than hear. And uh, yeah, projects or conferences, or of course, <laughs> if you like, come to uh, Airport Munich. Uh, there are st still few seats left, and there will be summer edition probably as well, and winter edition again this year. So thank you, and bye.